Right. Now, this is uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 10, verse 11, titled, The Departure from Sinai. And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. So you already should know what the testimony is, uh, which is, uh, what was it, Ark? Shit, <laughs> I forgot, wait, sorry. The testimony of uh, the Ark, wait. Yeah, wait, let me see. Yeah, this, this, this. But then wait, wait, yeah, the testimony you could do it there and stuff like that. Because this was one of the ways that you could communicate, you know, with the, yeah, the mercy seat. You know, this is the one of the ways you could communicate with the Lord back in the days. I already did videos about that in the other chapters and stuff like that. Right. So it says here the cloud. Now, what is the cloud? The cloud is talking about the chariots of Israel. Verse 12. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai. And the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. How can a cloud rest? Well, it's not talking about an actual cloud as how people think a cloud would be. Because back in the days, they did not call it... They did not call it the UFOs because they called it the chariots of Israel. And they was invi invisible because nowadays you, Edomites, they need a radar in order to spot something. If it's there, if it's invisible with an invisible cloak, they could spot it. But our people only have to pray to the Lord and then we could see things. We don't need a radar. The Most High could just make you see it. Now, you had Elisha pray to, for her servant. Wait, Wait a minute. Elisha, here, Elisha prayed for her servants, I have to be open now, it says, here, 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 13, was it 6 or 15? Yeah, it was 6 or 15, good. And when the servant of the man of God, Elisha, he was the man of God, was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host, now a host is an army. That's why the Lord is the, the, the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of armies. And what is his armies? His angels. But the men on earth, the angels upon planet earth, the house of David, for example, because they will be like angels upon planet earth. And they already work, but in lesser strengthened form. Zechariah chapter 12, you can see. Wait, let me get that for you real quick. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Zechariah chapter 12. So it says here. Verse 8. In that day the Lord shall defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them. At that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God. As the angel of the Lord before them. Before who? And it shall come to pass in that day. That it will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. So. The house of David is going to be like the angel of God before all nations. And they're going to beat them small. Right. So the word host means, uh, yeah, I guess the da da da, but not this one. Not that one either. Not that one either. Army. Here it is. Army. The Lord of hosts. Army, biblical meaning. Bible definition. It means army. Army of angels. Here. Heavenly host or Lord of hosts. Tazabah. Uh, Awath. Tazabah Awath. Yeah, Tazabah Awath. Tazabah Awath. Oh, sorry. Tazabah Awath. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, Tazabah Awath. Yeah. It's Tazabah Awath. Now it says here, um, if it refers to the army, Luke chapter 2, verse 13, of angels, mentioned both in the Hebrew and Christian Bibles, as well as other Jewish and Christian texts. But the, the word means uh, the Lord of armies. That's, that's, that's what he is. Armies. Host. And the host, an army, compassed, they circled them, the city both with horses and chariots. And by the way, in those days, it was actually these type of chariots of war. For example, these type of uh, ancient time, this, this, this. These, these uh, horses and chariots back in the days. That's how they used to go to war back in the days. 
And his servant said unto him, uh, 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 unto the man of the man of God, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And back in the, back in those days, yeah, you know, uh, people were referred to as masters and stuff like that. But uh, not in a disrespectful way towards the heavenly Father, because this is a man of the a man of God, right? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. <laughs> and Elisha prayed, which was that man of God, and said, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. And Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So there were horses and chariots of fire. What is a chariot of fire? A chariot of fire is this thing. You had this, uh, wait, no, wait, 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 um, what do you call that thing? Hmm. You had the USO UFOs in Washington here. It's in that fire. Because another word of saying light is fire. Because back in the days, they, they didn't know what a light bulb was. So, they just called it fire. Because everything that gave light, guess what? You equalize it with fire. Back in the days before these uh, Edomites, these so-called Caucasian people, before they could make before they could make a light bulb that you can touch, yeah, nowadays you can touch them. You can touch them because they're not hot. They're not getting hot. But in the 1980s, you didn't have these type of things because the, the technology was not invented yet. Well, not commercially, let's say that. So, everything that gives off light, guess what? It gives off heat. So back in the days, they would look in the air and they would see lights and they would, oh, there's a pillar of fire. There's fire right there. That's what they would call it, a chariot of fire because they could move around in it. And that you can see also in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1. You can see that, that the angels came in chariots. Right? So, uh, the people of the Heavenly Father, they don't need a radar like Esau does in his military and stuff like that. They don't need that. What they only, only need is praying to the Heavenly Father, and then you can see stuff, you know, in the spiritual realm with the spiritual eyes. Because it says here, um, you have many documentaries about, uh, for example, this one. You have many document, well, not, not too much, but you have a few documentaries where you have, where you have, uh, you know, footage. Oh yeah, I, I, I have, an, I have another one. I have another one. Oh, where's it again? Oh yeah, they took my channel down yesterday. No, today. So I can't show that one yet. Mm, where was it again then? Shit. Yeah, I just uh, remember that they took my channel down. But anyway, I'll put a link in the description box toward that video, which show you that. Wait, let me try and find. <laughs> It's very funny. I actually found it because I typed in this. Were you guys screwing around up there, UFO? And then it came. And then I clicked on it. And then uh, I saw his face. And I was like, yeah, that's him. And then I remember his name, which is Robert John Jacobs. And then I typed in Robert Jacobs CNN story because I remember it was on CNN. And here it is. That's it. But uh, what he's going to do is... When they was looking, I'll just speed it up a little bit. When they was looking, as you can see, here is the chariot, but here is the missile. And it shot a laser beam, at, as you can see here. It shot a laser beam at the, at the thing, at the missile. And UFOs, government cover-up, right. But the thing is, when they saw the footage with the naked eye, they, they couldn't see it. But then they applied a filter or something. Or was it? Uh, I haven't seen this video in a long time. That's why. So, uh, what, just watch the video yourself. Yeah, he he he's gonna explain. So uh, yeah, uh, let me go on. Uh, this is his name, Robert Jacobs. I'll put this link in the description box too, so you can check it out for yourself. All right. Goes a little bit in, in more more in depth than this little small clip. But yeah, so it says here uh, because. Let me explain why I put that as an example, because when they looked at it the first time with the naked eye, 
they didn't see the chariot of fire come in, go around, shoot it, and then go around the same way it came out. <laughs> and then the missile fell. You know? So that was funny. And he was on Larry Queen talking at Chitter Chatter, but uh, it's all good. So yeah. That's what our that's the power of our people. And that's that's one of the clouds, by the way. It's also a chair is a pillar of cloud by day and a um, pillar of fire by night. Right. So at nighttime it gives light and by day it's it's in the air, but they didn't know what to call it, and the next best thing that they knew was a cloud. And that's what they call it. So yeah, when it says here, Numbers chapter 10, verse 12, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. Okay, so it says here, the book of Desta, I'm going to explain it now. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. And it came to pass about an eighth, uh, what? And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray, an actual mountain, physical one. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. They would call the Heavenly Father, his son, a shapeshifter, because his face altered. Now, if you read the book of Matthew chapter 17, it says he transfigured himself, right? Matthew 17 and, seven, uh, and 1. And after six days, Jehovah Shai taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a mountain apart, loose from everybody else, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And they would call him a reptile or something like that, because the word transfigured means transform into something more beautiful or elevated. Yeah, Yahawashai transformed into his angelic form. You can read these two chapters if you have the chance, if you have the time. The fashion of his countenance was altered. Luke also gave the story, and Matthew also did. And his raiment was white and glistering. But Luke went into another type of depth. As you can tell, for example, you can be in an area, let me see. Um, you can be in a Walmart, for example. Just wait, let me see. Inside. Yeah, hold on, just give an example. Let me see. Let's just do this. Let's say you have two photographers. One photographer here and one photographer here. And he has a camera, not just a photo for a photo machine thing, you know. He's filming here and stuff like that. And the other one is filming this direction. They're both in the same place, but they will have two different stories to tell, especially through the lens of the camera. You And if they decide not to actually pan toward their sides, I mean the opposite their sides, you know, they just... They just aim here in this right direction, and the other one just aims there to get the full scope, you know, here and hit him there. If they didn't tell you that they was in the same place, or if you didn't know the, these buildings, you would not know that they were in the same place. And the point of this story is to tell you that, look, and he listen, he would see different things of the same area. He might, you know, notice a few things of there too, because of course these people that walk over here toward this side, toward this side. They would be on his camera too. And then if you put the two to two together, you'd be like, hey, I saw this group of people on his camera and I saw the group of people on that camera. But on this guy's camera, you can see their faces. And if you only see this, then you wouldn't see their faces unless they turn around and look, you know? But the point is that they're in the same area, but they have two different stories. That's the point, <laughs> right? So now you have Luke that's going a little bit different and deeper in than Matthew. So it says here, first 30. Luke 9 and 30, and behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, which was Elijah, who appeared, because you can see it here, uh, Elijah, it's not Elias, it's Elijah. You can see it here. Elias is the Greek equivalent of saying Elijah, right? That's it. And he does not look like that. That's, that's just, well, this one is, is kind of brownish, but Elijah was much darker than that. So, yeah, it's funny as hell who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, uh, yeah, decease, which he 
would accomplish at Jerusalem. Yahweh was talking about, okay, I'm going to die over there. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy, heavy with sleep. They were sleepy as hell. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. On the mountain they were sleeping. And the two men that stood with him, right? And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Yahweh Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah, which is Elias in the Greek equivalent of Endera. Not knowing what he said, because he was sleepy as hell, right? While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Yahweh was found alone, and they kept it close, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. But the point is that they entered into the cloud. How can you enter into a cloud? A cloud is not something that you could just walk on. <laughs> this is talking about a UFO, the chariots of Israel, the ones that Esau needs to see with a radar. But we, our people, our ancestors actually, they used to be able to actually pray for you and open your eyes and you can see them and you would marvel at the glory of them right so you can read this chapter for yourself if you feel like it if you have the time right okay so that's enough and then uh okay that also is enough right so going on to first uh, 13 numbers 10 and 13 and they were first what? and they first took their journey according to the commandment of Yahweh by the hand of Moses because Moses showed them how to do the things that the Lord told Moses to, to make them do to make the people do in the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah according to their armies and over his host was Nanshon the son of Aminadab and over the host of the tribe of children of Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zoar. Okay, I'll, I don't want to really read this because I know I'm going to butcher the names. But then, okay, let me just read it. But uh, it's not really that important. Oh, but I'll still read it. Uh, let me see. And the tabernacle was taken. Wait, wait, sorry. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Zebulon was Eliab, the son of Helon. And the tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari set forward, bearing the tabernacle. Right, which is this uh, portable, you know, you know, there, there was there was holding, for example, these 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 sticks and the 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 the, 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 the sheet here, and and, and and poles here and stuff like that, you know, the table and stuff. They, they was carrying that those stuff. And the standard of the camp of Reuben set forward according to their armies. And over his host was Eliezer, the son of Shedder. Shedder. And over the host of the, child of, of the children of Simeon was Zelumiel, the son of Zerujadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Gad was Elisi, Eliasa, Eliasa, the son of Duel. And the Kohathites set forth, forward, bearing the sanctuary, which is also, you know, carrying stuff. And the other did set up the tabernacle against they came. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set forward according to their armies. And over his host was Elishama, the son of Amihud. So or the, 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 basically the captain of, of, the whole, of that army was this, was this guy. And over the host of the children of Manasseh was Gami. Liel, the son of Pedasur. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abidan, the son of Gideon. And the standard of the camp of the children of Dan set forth, which was 
the reward of all the camps throughout their host. The re-reward. What? Oh, yeah. What? what? Yeah, it was the re-reward. <laughs> the back side of the army. The forces at the rear. Right? The re-reward. And over his host was Aiezer, the son of Amishadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pagiel, the son of Akran. And over the host of the tribe of Naphtali was Ahira, the son of Enan. Thus were the, so, thus were the journeys of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. So the, the, these were the, their ways, you know, the journeys of the children of Israel. And Moses said unto <coughs> Hobab, the son of Raguel, the Midianite, which the Midianites were Ishmaelites, which were Arabs. But sometimes you did have Israelites that would take on the name of the country they were in. Like Simon the Canaanite. He was not a Canaanite. He lived, he, he lived there among them. But he was actually an Israelite. But uh, to lose confusion, to not set up confusion, the Midianites were, where was it again? Um, it was in the book of Judges. Spell earrings wrong. It was Joshua. Joshua 8 and uh, 24. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that ye should give me every man the earrings of his prey. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. Right. <coughs> now you might ask yourself, where does it say, where does it, say it then? It says it right here. And then. <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> I, I was just reading with uh, what did I just read? Oh, sorry, eight and twenty-four. Yeah, eight and twenty-four, and this is Judges eight and one. So eight and twenty-four. Here you can see eight and twenty-four, because they were Ishmaelites, and eight and one is the beginning of the chapter, of course. So it says, And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did shied with him sharply. And after that, when he won them, it says here, it shows you that they were Ishmaelites. And uh, these Ishmaelites had a lot of earrings, had a lot of gold and stuff like that. You can read the chapter for yourself if you have the time. Because we killed them. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Raguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. Yeah, because Moses was married unto a Midianite. Uh, if I'm correct, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Moses, Moses was married unto Ethiopian also? Wait, wait. Right, Midian. Yeah, here, Midianite, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sephora. Sephora was a Midianite, which was a, was what, which was an Ishmaelite. And by the way, the Ishmaelites were, saw, was, uh, were also dark-skinned. It was around the time that they got conquered by the Greeks and got raped white and that's why they look like that a lot of them but you still have you still have dark skinned Arabs until this day and no they're not African they're dark skinned Arabs because one of the sons of Ishmael was Qadar what? Ish. Kedar. 
right here. Genesis 25, 13, and these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, and Kedar, and Abiel. That, that's, uh, until this day, they got names like Abdel and Ishmael because it's, their, it's, it's from their ancestry. And Misham, Mibsham. But then uh, Abdel, a lot of them until this day, they call themselves Abdel, but one minus one uh, E, this thing over here which is Abdel. If I type in the name Abdel, I'm probably going to get them. Oh, sorry, shit. Wait. See, you already have a, uh, you already have an Arab. <laughs> you already got an Arab looking person, as you can see. You already have them, you know, and, and if I type in the other one, hey, guess what you're going to get? Eh? Ugh. A lot of people should know that these Arabs are named Ishmael and stuff like that. that that's one of their standard names. Mohammed, Ishmael, uh, Abdel. You know. And, um, yeah. There's Ad, Ad, Ad Bell, but uh, yeah. You also have Abdel. Okay, so yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of the same. Hmm, here. As you can see, Arab. Almost looked uh, Mexican. <laughs> but yeah, these Arabs have these names. Uh, as you can see here. Yeah, look at them again. Here, Arab again. And uh, here, you have them again. Yeah. Here, and another one. <laughs> and it goes on and on. Yeah, this is Abdel. But it's a, it's a different... Is just switch these two words, man. Different uh, writing of the name. Just like you have Luke and Lucy. Okay, and then Qadar. Yeah, that was that. What is what I was looking for? You have Qadar, right? So now you go to the Hebrew Qadar. You go to the Blue Letter Bible, and here you can see Genesis twenty-five and thirteen, where I was just then. And it says Qadar, and then you type on, you click on Hebrew, the the Strong's. Hebrews sixty nine thirty eight, and then you and, and it says here quadar, right? It says dark, dark skin. So it says here dusky, of the skin or tent. Kadar, a son of Ishmael, also collectively, Bedouin, as his descendants. Kadar means black skin or black skinned man. Why the hell would you call your son a black skinned man? Because the Ishmaelites were dark too. The Midianites, right? Which are Ishmaelites, the sons of Ishmael. So if you have a dark, very, very dark-skinned child and you name him literally black-skinned child, you literally name him that. How dark are you then? Ah, you get it? You get it? Yeah. So, uh, when it shows that mm, Midian... Mm, When it's so Sephora, and then it shows you as a dark skinned female, and then him being a so called light skinned, I don't know, cave monkey looking motherfucker. That's not him. Because uh, cause, uh, Ishmael was dark too. Uh, sorry, Moses was dark too. You know? And uh, this is not an African or, or so called Negro woman or a Hamite. It's an Ishmaelite. And the Ishmaelites were dark too. Right? That's the point. Right? Hmm. But as I said, history is written by the conqueror, not the conquered. Right? And Moses did not look like some kind of freakish uh, penis sucking, you know, when they circumcised the baby, the penis sucking dude. He don't look like that, okay? But then, yeah, like I said, history is written by the conqueror, not the conquered. So going on. Verse 29. Numbers 10 and 29. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Raguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord had spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to mine own land, 
and to my kindred, my own people. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. Right. He wanted to be, he wanted to have Moses there to look out for him, basically. <laughs> you be my eyes and, you know, there's stuff like that. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be, that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto thee. And they departed from them because back in the days they knew that, hey amen, if you chill around these people, you're going to get blessings. And be, if you're good with them, you're going to get blessings. But the, the, the so-called Caucasian people did not do that to us in slavery. What they did was they actually knew that we were the holy people. And, and then they put their feet upon our children's belly, for example. Wait, let me show you. Right. They would put their feet on our children, right, in order to get the sickness out of his body and make the sickness transfer onto the little jig body. Imagine if those were your children and seeing a slave master of children, watching your children as footstool as they grow. What do you think your children will be viewed as? How would your children feel? But anyway, the point is that he did this because the, he wanted the sickness to come up out of his body and go into the child of the little, go into the body of the little child. And also they used to, because they know our people were superior and they, they knew that, that our milk was stronger, everything was better. So they fed, they wanted our females to breastfeed their children, which nowadays they, they would do for free. So... <laughs> I ain't even gonna bother myself with that. But yeah, um, so wait, where was I? Yeah, verse 33. And they departed from the from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the Ark of the Covenant <clears throat> of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day, when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass, when the ark was set forth, that Moses said, Rise up, Yahweh, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Yahweh, unto the many thousands of Israel. Yeah, man. And that's the power that we're going to get back. We're going to be able to fight our enemies and stuff like that. Because I have seen a comment, like I saw a video, right? And on the comment section, the comment board, I saw something of a female, which she put a black female. Wait, let me try and find it. Wait. Right. Now, this is that video. Now, it says here, uh, black females, you know, when she's around so-called, you know, Afro men, then she's a black family that's all tough and gangsta and shit like that. But when she is around Edomites, she's very submissive because she's a slave and she knows her place. So that's beautiful. Now, this this beast over here said, my husband is Italian, so I can speak on this topic in my humble. You fuck your humbleness. Being in a relationship with a black, non-black male, or different culture plays an important role. In my husband's culture, and uh, women stick to traditional Italian gender roles, right? Black relations are very toxic. They include infidelities, emotional and psychological cycle abuse uh, imbalance and physical and mental health issues in most black relationships the women can't express femininity because you're, you're a man because you want to be the man they are playing the role of the man you got them right but anyway you know it says you date us different 